Hi everyone, Alex with Beam It Up. Today I'm going to show you how to create piping families in Revit MEP. For that we're going to use a grease interceptor. Before that we're going to do a quick introduction to uh, greasy waste systems. I'm going to give you a little bit of an overview of greasy waste requirements, a little bit of history, a couple of examples down here in South Florida, and then we're going to start uh, creating our piping family. And there are many great families available. Here's one from Shear. This is a grease interceptor, the GB250. This is another example from MyFab. Great families, but again, we're going to focus today on a basic family. It's just going to be a box with two connectors, an inlet and an outlet. That's going to be very helpful for you because it's, it can be used not only for a grease interceptor, but for solids interceptors, for a lint trap, for laundries. I mean, you name it. Um, and then how we're going to do that is first we're going to create some reference planes to define and constrain our geometry. We're going to define some parameters and associate those parameters to our geometry. That's going to be our length, our width, and our height. Um, we're going to create some extrusions. The main extrusion is going to be this rectangle, extruded the height, and then this uh, cylinders extruded uh, the diameter, extruded a certain length, probably an inch. And then we're finally going to add some, some connections. I'm going to show you how to add the, the piping connectors. And then we're going to import that family into a project and see how it's used. So see you in Revit. And before we even start, think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, then make sure you subscribe to the channel. You hit that bell so you get notifications. You don't miss any of our videos. So whenever you have greasy waste, you don't want to dump that directly into your public sewers. Uh, first, because it's not a good practice, and second, because it's not allowed by code. Um, so you have different requirements for fats, oil, and grease. This uh, this little brochure that I have here is from uh, Miami-Dade uh, County. I'm, I'm down in Florida. And we kind of have led the way on, on fats, oil, and grease management, plumbing, drainage-wise. So I'm going to do a quick side note here about the fats, oil, grease requirements. Uh, you know, in 1994, we had a fog. 1.0 that's fats oil and grease that's a you know rudimentary version of uh, you know the requirements here in, in in south florida for the management of those uh, discharges then on 2013 the epa uh, got a decree execution then 2015 we came up with a fog 1.5 with a bunch of different requirements then in 2018 fog 2.0 and then currently in 2021 we have a 2.5 and I'm bringing this up because, you know, requirements have changed quite a bit over the last uh, few years. Uh, so if you were to search under Google under sink grease trap, you would find something like this. And back in the old days, you were fine just providing a little grease trap under your sink. And that was the end of it. Then, you know, little by little, they started incorporating more requirements. Now, uh, for example, here you see that you have a, an an external sampling port at the discharge of the grease trap then the new plumbing codes now force you to uh, if you have let's say a, a triple bowl uh, sink you would have to discharge each bowl individually into your floor sink so you couldn't tie them up like this it would have to be like an individual you would have to discharge them individually into the floor sink so in the case of Miami-Dade County, for example, now they force us to have a solids interceptor at the inlet. Then you would have your grease trap and then you would have your external sampling port. I'm missing a couple of, um, you know, clean outs here and, the, and eventing. But the idea is the same even if you have a small set of, of, of a small grease trap that is only 20 gallons. And it would still require my solids interceptor at the inlet and the sampling port at the outlet. So for a while, it was very popular to have 
two Greece interceptors in series because that's the only way you would guarantee 99% efficiency. Anyway, there are some uh, great presentations in ASPI or you can do some research uh, online. So back to our family creation. So let's go under File, New, New Family, and let's select a generic model to start with. So if we go into our 3D view, we have a front, a right, a top, a left, a back, and a bottom, right? So just to be consistent with that, let's call this front, back, right, left, top, and bottom, okay? So we have our dimensions for width, for depth, height, and we have a size for our pipe diameter. So let's go back into our reference level, which is a plan view. So let's create a few reference planes here. So we go here, right click, create similar, go pick lines, and then let's give it an offset of, let's say one foot for now. So we'll have our left, right, our back plane, our front plane, and let's give them some names. Let's name them. So this was the front. This one here, we said that it was going to be the back. Then this guy here was going to be left. And this one is going to be right. And now let's go to the, let's say, front elevation, right? So we have a reference level here, which would be, let's say, the bottom. And then we want to define also the top. So I'm selecting the level here. So if I do tab select, I can select the actual reference plane. Actually, let's, let's, let's name it as bottom. So again, tab select so I can select the reference plane. Then right click, create similar. Let's pick say one foot again let's do it to the top and let's rename this as top plane now we have all all our planes if we go to our 3d view they should be consistent with our little cube here now let's dimension our little cube here so I'm going to have a width and a length and a height right so I want to make sure that when I increase my width or when I change my width, if it were to increase, I want to make sure that it's symmetrical. In other words, it will increase the same dimension this way as up to this way. So in order to do that, we're going to dimension from here to here to here. We're going to click outside and then by clicking this equal sign here, we'll make sure that's what it happens and then we're going to introduce a dimension now for the overall width and we're going to do the same thing for the length so we click here 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 and outside make sure we make them equal and then we do a dimension from here to here now let's create a couple of parameters for those dimensions. So this one we're going to make the width and this we're going to make the length. So we click on this dimension. We go here under create parameter. It's going to be a family parameter. We're going to keep it as a type. We're just going to do one type for this uh, example. But then if you had, let's say a, a hundred gallon or 500 gallon, then you would have type one, type two, type three, etc. So in this case, we said that this was going to be the width. And then this guy here, we're going to associate it to a parameter that is called length. And finally, in order to introduce the height, we have to go to a different view, right? So let's go to the front view. And remember, this was our top plane. So this dimension now from here to here let's click outside and then this dimension we're going to associate it to a newly created parameter that's going to be called 
height. Now we have our three dimensions. Now I notice that I have a little typo here. So let's go into our parameters and then that height. Let's fix that. There you go. Height, length, width. We're all good. And then finally, um, let's do something. Let's, you can see that this extrusion here for the pipe inlet and outlet is a little bit higher than halfway. So let's cut it three quarters. So I'm going to create a plane align with those connectors. So let's do that. Again, right click, create similar. And I'm going to do now pick lines and then my offset's going to be 0 0.75 feet from here to the top. There you go. So it's going to be like around here, that connector. So here, I'm going to click on this plane and I'm going to call it um, let's say connectors or inlet inlet outlet let's assume that they're both at the same elevation for this particular case so we're all set with all our planes our reference planes now we're ready to do to make our extrusion and create our little box now if you're serious about your professional training go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com at beamitup.com, we offer professional training on mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and fire protection systems. And we can also train you, obviously, in Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. So go ahead and visit us at beamitup.com or contact us directly at the email you see on the screen and let us know how we can help you get professionally developed. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you smash that like button down there, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell so you get notified. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.